Okay, so we talked recently about solving systems by least squares and how the least squares method was a method for where you have lots of equations and a small number of variables and your equations are not exact, there's some error involved, but you want to do your best job of trying to solve them anyway. And I want to talk about one situation where that comes up a lot and where which you'll study further on the third project, which is in fitting data to statistical models. So in my previous lecture, I used this system of equations as an example, except the variables were called x and y now, and I've changed their names to m and b. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to solve the equations b plus m is 6.9, b plus 2m is 11.2, and so forth? Well, here's one reason you might. You might be trying to plot a line, y equals mx plus b, through the points 1 comma 6.9, 2 comma 11.2, 3 comma 15.1, right? You might be trying to find m and b such as the line y equals mx plus b goes through those three points. And the fact that you can't solve these equations exactly corresponds to the fact that if you look carefully, you'll see that these three points are not exactly on a line. And the fact that there's a very good approximate solution corresponds to the fact that these three points are very close to approximately on a line. So last time, we used the method of least squares to find b is 2.87, m is 4.10, was an excellent approximation. And indeed, here's the line y equals 4.10x plus 2.87. And you can see it's a little above this point, a little below this one, but basically very close to all of them. So one thing that you use least squares for is to draw what's called the line of best fit. This is the line of best fit through those three points. Now, an interesting thing is you can use least squares to draw things other than lines. So on your first homework problem, you were given this problem. Here is the number of hours of daylight in Mumbai on the teeth day of the year, where T is 447, 74, or 273. Uh, I think it's these two here, 274, 273, are the equinoxes. And you ask to fit that information to a model of the form A plus B cosine 2 pi T over 365 plus C sine 2 pi T over 365. That's a sensible model to do because it's periodic with period 365. So when you did that, you got a system of three linear equations in the three variables A, B, and C. And you solved those linear equations to find the values of A, B, and C. And you were able to draw a sine curve passing through those three points. Because this was chapter one, you got three linear equations in three variables. And you, were, and you solved them exactly, and you didn't need to think about least squares. But now, suppose we include a few more days of the calendar. So I took the data from your textbook, and I added in two additional dates. Here's the summer solstice, and here's the winter solstice. On the longest day of the year, Mumbai gets 13.1 hours of sunlight, and on the shortest day, it gets 10.8 hours of sunlight. Let's try to fit it to the same model. So this time we're going to have five linear equations in just three variables. And those five linear equations in three variables do not have an exact solution. But we can still solve them using least squares. So I ran a least squares computation and here is a resulting sine curve. As you can see, it is not exactly through those five points, but it's a good fit to all of them. Here's a couple of remarks to make here. Um, sine and cosine are not linear functions, but that's okay. What's important is that the variables that we're solving for, a, b, and c, do show up linearly. So the equations that we are solving are linear equations, even though sine of x and cosine of x are not linear functions. And since it makes sense that you usually have many more pieces of data than you have parameters in your model, it's not surprising that this often shows up in data fitting applications. And that's all I have to say. This was a short lecture. That's how least squares is used in data fitting. 
enjoy project three.